Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, all my colleagues from all over the world. Uh, just a minute. Can you see my screen, black screen? Yes. Just, just yes. one minute. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes. Now, we are from Sao Paulo, Brazil. These are my disclosures. I'd like to talk to robot about robot latissimus dorsi transfer. It's a challenging trope because latissimus dorsi transfer has many applications. And I'll give you an overview of this technique. I think you, you like. This is what we do we face when we, when we transfer latissimus dorsi, huge approach uh, with scar tissue formation after and pain. Then our idea was do something smaller because the surgery is in evolution from open to endoscopic and think the next time, next step is the robotic one. Advantages are endoscopic, minimally invasive, in stereoscopic, uh, 3D dimensions view, tremor filtration, and device with seven degrees of freedom that makes very uh, simple to manage. The, the, the device have like a worst, like a hand. It's like you are using your uh, stitches or something, so, some device that you use every day in open surgery. And of course, ergonomy, because I want to make surgeries until 80 years old. To do what you do best, better and better, then we developed this technique. The first time we did this is, well, is a long time ago, nine years before, and this was what you did. This is the latissimus dorsi when you could see in the cadaver. Then uh, we start the clinical use. Why I'm using this for? For accessory nerve lesions, for transfer from a sub rotator cuff tears, and transfer for subscapularis and some other uh, problems of scapula. Here was how accessory nerve is rotunately uh, treated. These are the two possible surgeries. And we uh, were figuring out why don't use the latissimus dorsi as the instantaneous rotational center moves from medial to lateral during the abduction, then it would be more uh, rational. It's like the upper trapezium. Medialization of latissimus dorsi could less moment of downward rotation. Transport latissimus dorsi in abduction changes its action from downward rotation and depression to upward rotation and depression, improving elevation mechanics. Uh, remembering that happens because levator scapula is weaker than the upper trapezium. Then we figure out to do the, how to do this by robot, and this is the case. This is a patient with uh, accessory, an accessory nerve lesion and his, her scapula. You can see there's a very important winging and there are dysfunction of the scapula. And this is the way we do the surgery. This is how we, we position the patient, dorsal decubitus. There are no natural cavities. Then you have to create a cavity to insert this uh, optics and the device. Here, how we make the surgery. Here is an external view of the surgery. And here is how it looks internally. The teres major is separated by the, uh, the lat latissimus dorsi in this image, as you can see. Here, cutting the latissimus dorsi very near its insertion, cutting more. And you can see the radial nerve just uh, below the latissimus dorsi. And uh, we start to uh, manage the latissimus dorsi to separate it from the teres major. I'm separating from the teres major. Here you can see better the latissimus. This is the quadrangular space. Uh, uh, don't go there, but just to show you how it looks like. Then uh, we try. We start to make some sutures inside the body. These sutures are important to pull out of the body this latissimus dorsi by the, the portal, the optics portal. Generally, we use this. 
here I'm think I'm taking the wire and for the surgery I put the latissimus dorsi out then uh, I passed this subcutaneously to a small open on the the scapular spine uh, the levator scapula and the rhomboid minor are also subcutaneous passed through this small open in the spine the scapular spine and our suture here are the suture, the final sutures and again to better understand and this is the final result of the patient you can see that 11 weeks post-operative she is very well and here is the retraction he gained after surgery it's very impressive how a good uh, it works with the latissimus dorsi. This other patient with a stroke, uh, we start showing the quadrangular sprays, latissimus dorsi, and in this patient we did uh, just the the latissimus dorsi transfer because he had a different kind of uh, scapular disease or scapular dyskinesia. Here, cutting the latissimus very near the bone, you could see the bone before. Yes, it's a uh, very cautious, uh, uh, the use of the scissors, suturing again, putting out of the body, and again, making the sutures out of the body now, and passing to the scapula to treat some the scapular dyskinesia. This is the final surgery, it's okay. There are other applications used for massive rotator cuff tears. I'll just show you the last part. The first of the, the second, the latissimus dorsi is the same, but you use these uh, uh, wires to pass subcutaneously to, the, ten, to the, the rotator cuff, to the deltoid approach, sorry. And here is the final. And finally, the subscapularis, I think, this is one of the good applications we have done now, but now we're done in uh, dorsal decubitus and instead of the uh, supine decubitus. Here is subscap totally uh, devastated after a Bristol surgery that he has 30 years before. Here's the position we did the patient, the insertion of the robot in the axilla here how the robot works in this space. And this is the video. Oh, sorry. This is the latissimus I removed and inserted in the humerus. Is the latissimus radio nerve is the scissor. You can move the radio nerve and see the humerus shaft. Then we find out the margin of uh, the latissimus dorsi, the distal margin, and the, the uh, proximal margin, and then we, Rubis. we use to, 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 to remove the latissimus and separate the him from the teres major again. The device are not uh, done for surgery of orthopedic surgery, then we have some problems sometimes it's not so easy but here you can see we um, removing some adhesions of the rhomboid major and latissimus here it's just a small approach to do to do that all that we have to remove all the adherence the adhesions we have the latissimus and we transfer to the subdeltoid space and insert him on the humor uh, on the uh, less tuberosity of the humerus as you can see here this is the latissimus coming up and this is the result i'd like to thank you for this explanation and i'll be back <laughs> okay Thank you very much. Really amazing. Uh, is there any questions, Sergio?
We have time for a question. Inho. Inho. Jose, it was amazing technique. Yeah. Amazing technique. Any chance we can apply robotic surgery to rotate cuff or glenohumeral surgery? Yes, yes. What is I the think, future? Uh, I think uh, we have this this space for do that. Uh, we have to uh, develop some devices because the robot's not adapted to orthopedic surgery, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I think in the future, the robots will be the standards we will have to use in all uh, applications. Uh, I don't know how long this will happen, but uh, I think in the next 10 years, we will change a lot. Now we have some robots for uh, prosthesis in knee and uh, in hips, and in the next years to come from shoulder, then I think the robotics are the future and are all the parts of our uh, day by day saying OR. Mm -hmm.